Hey, if you're not buying the current rally attempt, there's probably good reasons why you're not. Uh, today's session of uh, On the Radar, I'm going to do a rapid stock review of four stocks that are setting up, some to go up, some to go down. You need to have them at least on your radar to take a look at them going forward. So with no further ado, I'm going to keep this down to a short session and away we go. So what do we got going on with the S&P? The S&P is basically pushing on up as represented here by the spiders. We're pushing them back up towards where? Towards past resistance from these past highs over here. Are we going to continue to move up or is it going to basically uh, be a rally attempt that fails. Now those happen occasionally and we want to be aware that that could happen again. So what are the indicators telling us? Well, the indicators are telling us a couple of good things. For one, here's the positives. PSI has crossed over. So we have a momentum shift up to the upside. Market forecast, the green line, that's the intermediate market forecast has crossed over. That's a good sign. Price actions came up off a level of support on uh, Friday of last week and Monday and continued. We've had a follow through, not a follow through to get us out of the uh, market in correction on IBD. What is some of the negatives? We're pushing that back up to past highs. TSI is not. TSI is not. Um, momentum, uh, correction, volume. Volume is kind of low. So, you know, how much of inertia is really pushing this up higher and stronger? Uh, and, and or is the, since the S&P is a weighted average, perhaps it's just the biggest stocks that are basically carrying the load, pushing the prices up higher and higher, while the, uh, um, the other stocks that have less weight are just, you know, kind of underperforming. So that's one of the things I want to be taking a look at. Uh, on a weekly chart, nothing to really write home about. We came down and we bounced off of where, you know, breakout area and went up higher. Uh, how am I going to trade uh, spiders? I would look for a negative reversal up here towards the highs if we rolled over and then fell down. The other positive that we want to keep our eye on is this. We now have the moving averages starting to roll back up. The, the 8 is about to cross the 20. That's all positive. So now the moving averages have moved into what I call the catching mode so that any pullbacks may be supported by the moving averages and provide a bounce. So what would be really awesome going into the end of the year, get two, three day pullback into the moving averages and pow, break up and away we go with the Santa Claus ho, ho, ho rally. That would be awesome. Q's, NASDAQ. NASDAQ, a little bit less engaged, as you see. It fell a lot further from its high for the year uh, to find support, but it found support at, a, at an uptrend line. And also one of the things that I find very interesting, found support at the 50% retracement of this big longer move that took place from uh, no, uh, October through the end of, uh, through the, towards the end of November. Pulled back to the 50% Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, gapped up on Tuesday, and away we went. Uh, I like the Q so well. I was trying to buy it down here on uh, Tuesday. Guess what? The gap up, it was a gap and go, and away she went. Similar type concerns, though, in that what's going on? ESI has turned up. Market uh, TS, TSI has turned up. Market forecast has turned up. However, what's going on with the, the uh, volume? It is sliding to the downside. It basically, uh, you have to have the volume to support the move. The question is still being asked, is this just a rally attempt up to a lower low? And then we get a reversal and move back down. So this could be just a, uh, a, a two-step move where this was one step down, one step up, and then a reversal down to the downside. We do not have a reversal candlestick in here yet. And again, the... Uh, the uh, bop, 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 moving averages have crossed to the upside. That's the 8 and the 20. So they, again, roll into what's deemed, what I deem is the catching mode. So they pull back into that area that then they hold 
would give us a great opportunity to get long on the Qs. And I'd be trading either uh, options on the Qs or TQQQ as a uh, uh, the leverage ETFs. IWM. Again, IWM is, continues to be some somewhat the redheaded stepchild. Because it is non-weighted, I think it provides a more accurate depiction of what's going on in the economy out there in that um, it is the rest of the economy, you could say, is lagging. <clears throat> Again, we've gotten up into the middle section of the uh, Fibonacci uh, Magic Fib box. See if we can get up to 50% retracement, but we are in a gap down area. So we have come up right up to the bottom of the, the, the bottom of the window and price actions are holding up. Again, TSI has crossed to the upside. Market forecast has crossed to the upside. Those are all positive. However, what we may get, as you can see, that when that happens, in the, when that ha has happened in the past, you'll get a move up for several days, then a pullback. And oftentimes it's that pullback that basically is a uh, take some profits off the table and then power where you go. It is in a level of support, a resistance. And so a pullback would not be a shocker uh, to us whatsoever. Uh, I like it at, you know, just if you're looking to potentially plan a trade, plan it for somewhere around that gap that happened yesterday. We had a gap and go yesterday also. But as you can see, what's the difference on the the, the uh, Russell? That long tail or that long wick on Tuesday's candlestick tells us it got up to the, um, in this case, the 20-day uh, moving average sold off. Got up to the 20-day moving average today, sold off a little bit, but not as much. So we'll watch this and just see, you know, uh, see if we do either pull back into the eight and then get a rebound. But let's get it away from the 20-day moving average uh, and also away from the 50 because that's where we could potentially learn and run into some, uh, some resistance that would basically dampen the up move. So now let's go ahead and jump in, as I said, Here's our rapid fire stock review. What stocks am I liking? Wow. First of all, let's start with Mara. Mara is a stock that basically we came down. We were trying to get into Mara over here. It, it basically broke down. So we, uh, on any type of a move off of that 47.58 level, it failed, dropped down. Found support, and I always like to say to people, look to your left. Where did it find support? Well, it found support where it came out of this congestion area here and then started to move up. So we have found support there, and that currently is holding. Are we going to get a pullback towards, you know, towards these lower level and then a rebound? We'll see. Similar to how the, um, uh, the Russell is doing, Mara is basically showing something similar. Pushed up into the moving averages and then is stalling out. Volume declining. Again, not a strong move. But oftentimes on that first attempted rally attempt off of the low, oftentimes it does get rejected at the moving averages and then pull back down into the towards the uh, support level. By that time, oftentimes we have a positive divergence on TSI and our market forecast, and then it goes from there. Note, uh, as I've said before, I like using TSI, and when it's showing us a pattern like this, where we have we did have a breakout of the downtrend line, so the momentum has shifted to the upside. The stronger of the two is when the market forecast green line shifts across the 20 line. That is oftentimes our signal, a big green light to say, hey, I need to start getting long this particular entity. So there's Mara. Uh, BX, not BS, BX. Uh, BX is kind of interesting. We had a big sell-off into a uh, hammer, Dragonfly Doji on uh, uh, Monday of this week. But then we uh, basically ran up on Tuesday, hit the moving averages. This is pretty classic. So I would consider this a failed rally attempt, hit the moving averages, and it is dropping back down. The 
indicators all lined up to the downside. I can load that line in there. Also, market forecast is down to the downside. TSI and over on the weekly chart, also down to the downside. And so I'm anticipating a potential move down. Where I'm looking at is basically I can take a trade right at the 50-day moving average or if I break the low of today. I can take a trade down to the downside. Uh, what type of a move would that give me? And also this particular stock does, BX Blackstone does have uh, weekly options. So let's get a, a an idea of how far the drop would be. If I drop from the low today down to that low right there, okay, that's about uh, 3.5, you know, $3.50. If it goes down to the lower section of the open window there, it's about $5. And, and again, if we get down into further support or the 200-day moving average, about $6.98. So it would lend itself to a pretty good uh, or pretty fast um, uh, option trade. The uh, This particular one is easy to borrow if you wanted to go short. But make sure if you if you don't know how to go short, uh, on a stock and you've never done it before, do it with a, you know, a paper trade just to get an idea uh, of how to do it or trade the option. I would look at doing probably a, uh, uh, a bear put spread on this one. That would be a debit spread with the anticipation I'd move at least 4 to $5. From where I'm at right now, that would be, eh, yeah, there's about 7 bucks right there. So that would give us an opportunity. Uh, and I'd be looking at where, when, am I, when do I have earnings coming up here? On 120. So I've got plenty of time and I can actually go out to uh, something two to three weeks from now. Uh, let's say December 23rd. And it has okay, not great uh, open interest on the options. So keep that. In. So that's the other one. BNTX. BNTX is of course, uh, BioNTex. It is a uh, it is a uh, vaccine stock, and it again went on just one huge, you know, uh, run back from 2018 when uh, it was getting prepared for the uh, for the virus that's out there right now, um, and it appears as if this bio, bio Intex was set up to be one, you know, it was kind of like a one, one trick pony. Uh, it was a, you know, it has one product, which is to combat a vaccine to combat uh, um, um, COVID. And so as COVID perhaps gets under more under control or, or it finds out that the variants are not a, of as, as affected by the uh, vaccine, this could take a major dump. The other thing, it's kind of interesting, but the other thing also is, you know, how many boosters is it gonna really require to keep people uh, safe? You know, I don't know, but clearly it's probably not gonna be as many as what was re originally required for the original inoculation. So uh, I, 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 you know, I really think that the path of least resistance on BioNTech is down and uh, it may give us several opportunities to trade it to the downside. I like it. If we break here, uh, you know, break out the uh, uh, low here, came up right to the 8-day moving average. We're closing back down below the 50. Uh, any drop, let's say, of today's low, uh, I would anticipate a pullback all the way back down at least to the 240 level. So that's almost a $50 drop. And last but not least, I've been saving the best for last. If you're a Tesla person, Tesla is also looking very interesting. Um, from the, I mean, Tesla is a, is a company that is not going to go away. Uh, you either love or you hate Elon Musk, uh, but you have to give him one thing. I think he is very innovative. In what he, you know, what he does and how he does it, um, he does rub people the wrong way. But they say that you know, brilliant people, in fact, do that. Um, I never rub anybody the wrong way, so so I must not be that brilliant. But let's take a look at what we got, what we have going on here. We came down on Monday this week, beautiful hammer, and now we're pushing back 
up is it going to break out if and and this is what i want to highlight to you that tesla is of interest in two different spots for me right now back down here at the support level or up here where this downtrend line is we could continue moving up but if i hit that downtrend line i want to you know be able to uh uh look at potential of taking a trade back to the downside now if we break out and move up that is another another opportunity also if you do not know how to uh put in a uh here's a little tr let me show you a trick okay i'll show you a trick is uh you can actually set up a, an alert based on the, uh, uh, the moving average maybe i'll save that for next week based on the trend line and uh, rather than show it to you right now, I'll save that for uh, a, a video over the weekend, but where you can basically set a, if it crosses that trend line, it will send you an alert. Uh, but uh, on this is on the Thinkorswim charts. And, I'll, and again, I will share that with you on the next video. So, hey, that's, that's what we have for today. How are we doing for time-wise? Pretty darn darn good. We hit 17 minutes, uh, and that covers us for today. I've given you uh, uh, four stocks, showed you where I'm interested in them at. Um, again, the other thing on Tesla, just let me remind you here, is see this: the momentum line has not broken up through the downtrend line yet. Volume is falling, so this is kind of a weak rally you could classify it as a weak rally so that's what we've got going on for today hey i want to basically give a shout out to a couple of my my friends out there in um and one of them is mike lamont he's going to be having a stock twits meetup over on in long island tonight at 6 p.m and uh, those of you on the East Coast, you probably know exactly where this is at. Me here in Hawaii, I haven't got a clue where it's at. <laughs> so I encourage you, go give Mike a shout out. Uh, Mike is an excellent trader. I just seen He also has his own YouTube channel, and I will put that. Uh, and it's called Mara, M-A-R-A, Wealth. And again, uh, uh, just awesome, awesome trader. And... Um, uh, follows a hybrid uh, IBD uh, can slim approach. And so I really love what Mike's doing. And again, uh, you know, sub subscribe to him on YouTube but, and also follow him on Instagram. And um, I think he's on, I don't know if he's on Facebook or not, but he is on Instagram and Twitter if you do Twitter. The other one I want to give a shout out to is my buddies over at the... I can find them here they are the disciplined mind trading disciplined mind trading this is steve and um uh, and bobby absolutely i i have to say two of the best can slim traders that i have ever met they are phenomenal they are awesome and they tell it like it's like it is they you know they and, and that is one of the things that i think is just phenomenal uh, their honesty and uh, also just staying on top of the market. They are experts at using market smith, some of the IBD tools. And a little birdie told me they're probably going to be at Mike Lamott's event this evening. So go on over. And if you do check in, tell them that uh, just give them a big aloha from me saying, hey, Dennis Sinis. <laughs> anyway, until next time. If you like this format, the rapid fire stock review, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your enemies, join us on YouTube and I will give you the best I have to make you a better trader to help you build wealth and find financial freedom. So until next time, aloha, God bless everybody.